Hi guys, as you are uh, aware of the fact that we have started the series of power electronics <coughs> in which we have already seen the IV characteristics of uh, one of the power electronics switch uh, that's the silicon control electrifier SCR, SCR switch. Today we are going to see the IV characteristics of yet another switch uh, which is in my hand as IGBT that's the insulated gate bipolar transistor which is in my hand. It's also a three terminal device having three pins or three legs which are designated as if you are uh, seeing uh, this from this side you, this is the gate terminal this is the collector terminal and this is the emitter terminal or you can say the common terminal right so today we are going to see the IV characteristics of this uh, power electron switch IGBT so let us uh, assemble this on this breadboard and the various accessories which we will require in uh, visualizing its IV characteristics is this uh, DC power supply which we are going to apply some uh, collector to emitter voltage and this uh, meter uh, which we are uh, going to use to measure the uh, uh, collector current and this meter voltmeter which we are using uh, to measure the collector to emitter voltage and this is our load resistance 47 ohms 10 watt right and this is the function generator from which we are going to give the gate pulse uh, to this IGBT and uh, this is the oscilloscope upon which we are going to visualize the gate impulse which we are going to give this switch. So let's start to assemble the same on this breadboard. So let's start. So we'll fix this switch on this breadboard. So I will show you once again the three terminals. So this is my gate terminal. This is the collector terminal and this is the emitter terminal. So first what we will do, we will apply some voltage, some amount of DC voltage between this collector and and this collector and emitter why this load resistance so first we will uh, going to complete that circuitry right so what we will do we can see the we are going to so this is uh, this is a multi power supply we are going to use this power supply power supply a right the positive of this power supply is going we can see in the positive of this milliampere ammeter right and the negative of this to measure the collector current and the negative of this is going to to the collector part you can see that the mid leg of this IGPT is the collector part so it's going into the collector to measure the collector current then after that we will fix this load resistance which uh, 47 ohms and its voltage is 10 watts we will f first fix it on the breadboard okay after that you can see the negative terminal of this uh, power supply is going is going to one of the terminal of this uh, resistance so I am connecting it here also and another part is going to the resistance of this is going to the common portion that's common pin that's this emitter pin so this way we have completed the power circuitry of this switch IG BT that is what we have simply done we have connected this DC source via uh, meter to measure the collector current to measure the collector current uh, drawn by this load resistance for a given amount of voltage now let's also connect a voltmeter across collector and emitter to measure the collector and emitter voltage you can see the positive of this voltmeter I am connected it with the collector and the negative of this voltmeter is going to emitter almost the power circuitry of this circuit is completed so right now we have not given any gate pulse to the switch and we will uh, see the forward blocking behavior of this switch so what we will do we will switch on this power supply uh, so now you can see <coughs> what I am doing I am increasing the voltage applied across collector to emitter and you can see as I am increasing the voltage, you can see the voltage across collector and emitter is displayed by this meter and simultaneously you will see the anode current is zero. It is not showing any reading. This anode current, sorry, this collector current is zero. Right? That means I am applying forward voltage between collector to emitter but my switch is not in conduction mode, it is in forward blocking mode. Right? You can see up to 20 volts you can see I apply 20 volts across collector to emitter since the switch is not in the conduction mode it is in forward blocking mode then my collector current is zero so it will conduct only when, my, uh, when I will apply some positive gate pulse between the gate and the emitter 
right? And that gate signal I am going to apply by using this function generator, right? With frequency first I will set up to say 20 kilohertz. So from here I can adjust this frequency since IGBT is a um, medium frequency operating device. It can operate between uh, some hertz to 20 kilohertz in the safer operation. So first I will set this frequency up to 20 kilohertz and I will apply at this 20 kilohertz. I will apply some gate pulse first to turn on this uh, IGBT, right? To see at constant collector to emitter volt, I, I will cap uh, collector to emitter voltage is constant 20 volts. I will see at what gate uh, voltage it will get turned but I will ch see I will change gate emitter voltage. The same will be applied, see, right now. What I will do, the positive of this, I will be applying to the gate portion and this terminal is gate. Now you can see that the function generated which, uh, from which we are going to give the gate pulse to the switch and the pulse which we are going to get pulse can be seen from this uh, digital storage oscilloscope. Currently you can see and its output is seen on the oscilloscope and simultaneously the output is fed to this uh, switch and is the positive of that switch uh, and is the negative. The positive will go to the gate terminal so I'm applying this positive to the gate terminal negative of this will go to the emitter part okay so you can see from here I can increase the frequency since I'm using the IGBT it's frequency operating frequency is around 20 kilohertz so I will increase the frequency you can the same is seen on the oscilloscope so what I will do, I will increase the frequency to 20 kilohertz. Almost is done. Also the amplitude of this gate signal currently that's the gate voltage I am applying across gate and emitter is 0.177 volts peak to peak. So its magnitude can be increasing. Now what I will do, first I will keep this voltage to almost the minimum value. From here I will turn on the supply and I will increase the voltage. You can see I will set the voltage to 20 volts. Okay. As you can see my collector current right now is zero because my switch is right now in forward blocking mode. Now what I will do, I will start increasing, I will start increasing the magnitude of uh, gate emitter voltage and you can see at a particular gate emitter voltage, this my switch will go into the conduction, forward conduction mode and the collector current will go on increasing and the collector emitter voltage will go on decreasing. So let's try to increase, you can monitor both this. I'm increasing the voltage simultaneously you can see the collector current right I'm increasing I'm increasing see right now you can see at this voltage here almost 4.14 V peak to peak voltage my switch has gone into the conduction mode and at this gate emitter voltage the current drawn by this uh, collector current is this much amount of milliamps as shown by this medium and the voltage has fallen from 20 volts to some less than so, so if I'm increasing so right now you can see uh, this characteristic will be at, co at constant collector emitter voltage uh, I am applying and I am increasing gate emitter voltage and you can see you can see my anode current is increasing as I am increasing and simultaneously my voltage collector voltage is falling so this is the one type of characteristics so if I am setting say I am setting some amount of gate emitter voltage say at this amount of gate emitter voltage, five, the collected emitter voltage has fallen almost say 12 volts and my current is around 200 milliamps. Now what I will do, I will do, I will change the switching frequency and see the effect of changing or switching frequency. What is going to happen? What is going to happen on this collector current? So you can see I am increasing the switching frequency. First you can see my collector current is slightly reducing, slightly reducing. Right now my switching frequency is 36 kilohertz, right? My voltage is almost 
constant. I am not in doing with the gate emitter voltage at constant. Sorry, collective emitter voltage at constant. But I am only changing the switching frequency of gate emitter voltage which I am feeding. But you can see the collector current is slightly reducing, right? Currently the switching frequency is 52 kilohertz, and slightly there is a dip in the collector current, right? I am going on increasing. I am going on increasing. Right? You can see at a particular frequency, the breakdown of this switch will occur, and current will abruptly rise. That is happening around when my switching frequency touches 100 kilohertz. That's interesting to see. Right now I am at 90 kilohertz. You can see the current is almost reducing in a very little amount. But you can see as I approach the 100 kilohertz, you can see I will I will show you again. You can see the breakdown uh, breakdown is occurring. You can see what's happening. The current is abruptly increasing and then coming to the steady state value, right? So this was all about how we can plot the VI characteristics of this IGBT at constant collector to emitter voltage at different by changing the gate emitter voltage, the magnitude as well as the frequency. Thank you.